Market conditions are pointing to a quieter NBA free agency period in 2020. That and like 40% of the league changed teams last year. <laughs> the only teams with major money to spend are pretty bad. It's basically the Knicks, the Cavs, the Hornets, and the one bright spot, the Heat. So it's going to be all about finding that right guy at the right contract who can fit your team in the right way. No pressure, right? In today's video, I'm telling you where five of the NBA's top free agent shooting guards should sign. How's it going everybody? This is Troy, host of the Half Court Report YouTube channel, and in today's video, continuing a series that I started a couple weeks back where I'm looking at each position in the NBA, all five positions, and telling you where some of the main players from those positions should sign for NBA free agency. I did point guards for the first video in this series this time around. I'm gonna talk about shooting guards, and real quick, as always, new videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays about anything and everything NBA. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, helps me out a ton. First guy I'm gonna talk about is Evan Fournier of the Orlando Magic. And Fournier is a guy who could opt out of his deal. He has a player option for next season, but not many teams have the cap space to offer him the type of deal that he might be seeking. Fournier has enjoyed tremendous success in terms of shooting the basketball. I'm talking about overall, from three-point range, and from the free throw line. He leads the Magic in three-point shooting at almost 41%. His free throw percentage is at 82%. 47% shooting overall is the best of his career. And he's also led the Magic in scoring 21 times this season. Over the last couple of years, he's really worked to make himself a much better distributor and facilitator who makes other players better in the offense. So he's really becoming a well-rounded player as he gets farther into his career. I think picking up his player option is going to be what happens here. If he ends up maybe declining that player option to re-sign with the Magic, I think that could be one outcome. Who knows though, maybe the Knicks give him a monster offer. Maybe the Pistons give him a monster offer because they decide Luke Kennard just isn't cutting it for them. But the thing with Fournier though, he's more of a third option kind of guy. He's not the type of guy who you're gonna wanna tie up so much money in your salary cap to sign. He's not gonna get you over the hump. He's gonna be more of a complimentary piece. So teams have to remember that. Next up is Bogdan Bogdanovich of the Sacramento Kings. And Bogdanovich has shown plenty of potential as a knockdown shooter for Sacramento. And he also gives the team some assists, some ball handling, but it has been hard to assess his progress in his third season. So he's a little bit older, he's 27 years old. He came in late as a rookie. He's been dealing with some injuries that have kind of hampered him all season long. As a result, his stats look pretty carbon copy to what we saw in his second year. On the plus side though, Bogdanovich is shooting over 36% from three-point range with an increased 7.2 attempts per game. He's also averaging more than three assists per game for the third straight year. I think in a pinch, you could kind of plug him into that backup point guard role if you have to. The question with Bogey is, has he done enough for the Kings to keep him and re-sign him to another contract? And I think the answer is yes. He's a good fit for their roster. He gives them floor spacing. He also shows the ability to score, create for himself, and he uses a variety of shots to get his points. He's a restricted free agent this offseason, so Sacramento is going to have the opportunity to match any offer sheet that he gets. And essentially, the Kings are the ones who have all the leverage here. They hold all the cards. But I could see a big offer coming from the Hawks or the Hornets. I think that can make a lot of sense, too. Next up, we've got Joe Harris of the Brooklyn Nets. And Harris has played a lot of small forward this year. I see him more as a two guard though. Joe Harris has had a pretty successful past few seasons with Brooklyn. And it's easy to forget that when he was drafted into the league, 
his first couple of years, he was just wasting away on the bench in Cleveland before they traded him, I want to say to Orlando, and then he never played for them, ended up with Brooklyn. But he has really come into his own his last four seasons with the Nets. He's 28 years old. He's developed into one of the league's best three-point shooter, 41% from three, that's really, really good. Tied for 15th in the NBA. He's gonna be an unrestricted free agent next year. He's gonna have tons of teams that are after his services. It's gonna be really tough for the Nets to let Joe Harris walk away considering where they plan to be next season. You're gonna have Kevin Durant coming back. Kyrie Irving is gonna be healthy. Those are the types of players that are really gonna fit well with Joe Harris and allow him to bring out the best in his game. You're gonna have lots of teams concentrating on those guys. He's gonna be wide open behind the three-point line all the time. He's a great catch and shoot player. He's really carved out a significant role in Brooklyn. I think the Nets are aware that they're gonna to have to go over the luxury tax to sign Joe Harris, and they're cool with that. Harris has thrived as a shooter. He's become a solid rebounder. And I think the Nets are definitely a destination for him to be re-signed, but I could also see Oklahoma City trying to get in there. But I also think the Heat could be an option. They've got lots of money to offer free agents. Next up, I'm gonna talk about Bryn Forbes of the San Antonio Spurs. And Forbes is one of my favorite under the radar free agent targets for next season. He provides an offensive boost. He's got that ability to space the floor. He can really knock down shots at a pretty efficient rate. So he served as a rotation piece for the Spurs for the past couple of years. But with their guard depth, with Jante Murray, Derek White, Keldon Johnson, who barely played at all last year, they've got a lot of guys in the mix. So it might be tough for them to re-sign Brent Forbes and give him the type of role that he needs to get. From about mid-December to the shutdown of the season in March, Brent Forbes shot about 42% from three. And you gotta remember, the Spurs don't take threes. He was the main guy doing that for them. If not for him, they would have been way, way down in the standings as far as three-point makes. Any team that signs Brent Forbes is gonna get him for that floor spacing role because you're not really gonna get him for his defense. He's a bit of a liability there. So a team might be able to get him for a pretty good price because he doesn't really fill in that three and D role. He just fills in the three part of it. He's gonna be the kind of guy who comes off the board when a lot of the tier one and tier two free agents get signed. So if the Spurs don't re-up him, I think he makes a lot of sense with the Suns as a backup to Devin Booker or as a guy who can play with Devin Booker. And he can also make some sense with Chicago as well because they really need some offense off their bench. Finally, I'm gonna talk about Pat Connaughton of the Milwaukee Bucks. I know you guys were thinking, okay. This guy is not gonna talk about Pat Connaughton. Well, I think I'm the first NBA YouTuber to ever mention Pat Connaughton in a video, but I love this guy. Connaughton is a winner. He can make a big difference on a team. And we're seeing that with the Bucks. In his five seasons as a pro with Portland and Milwaukee, he's averaged just under five points a game about 15 minutes per game. He really hasn't done a lot, but I think a lot of that is due to lack of opportunity. Connaughton has been in Milwaukee for the past couple years playing alongside Giannis, and I really think he's passed the eye test as far as what he can do for a team. Again, the numbers aren't gonna scream superstar, but when you watch him play, it's pretty obvious that he is a guy who can impact the game in a positive way and someone that teams can really use on their roster. He's 6'5", he's got a 6'9 wingspan. He's best as one of those slashing type wings, someone who can cut to the basket when the defender loses focus. His vertical leap is unreal at 44 inches. Do you guys remember when he was in the dunk contest back in February? He has no problem getting above the rim, finishing around the rim. In addition to the Bucks, I think the Dallas Mavericks makes some sense for Connaughton. Playoff teams that are looking to take that next step need guys like Pat to bring those teams together during the long grind of a season. He's also an Indiana guy. He went to Notre Dame for college. I see the Pacers as an option too. I think they can make some sense, especially with the uncertainty surrounding Victor Oladipo that could open up more minutes at the two-guard spot. 
That's gonna do it for today's video. Next up is gonna be small forwards, and we're gonna do power forwards and centers. Those are all gonna be future videos. Gonna try to do maybe about one of these a week. Let me know what you think in the comments about these free agents. Who are you excited to see on your team? Doesn't have to be any of these guys. Could be another two guard that uh, is gonna be a free agent this season. But really weak shooting guard class, but you know, that's just how it is some years. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. Helps out the channel a ton. This is Troy with the Half Court Report and I'll see you next time.